In the book of Ephesians, Paul wrote a letter to explain who we are and what we have in Christ. At the time in history that Paul wrote this letter, Christians were on the run. They had no rights. They were in great danger. Paul actually wrote this letter while on house arrest in Rome. And despite his circumstances, Paul wrote to the church in Ephesus, describing the fullness and richness of life in Christ. The letter to the Ephesians explained what it meant to be in Christ, to be the church, the body of Christ. Paul knew that if the Ephesians understood who they were and began to live in Christ, the world would never be the same. The same can be true for our church today. If we understand what it means to live in Christ, to be the church, our city and our world would never be the same. Welcome to this week's Message Connect. I am Don Conley. I'm the senior minister here at Ringgold, and we are excited to have you with us this week as we study together uh, through the Message Connect studies. Our prayer and our desire is that God would take the content of these Message Connects and use them to encourage you in your personal relationship with Jesus as you discover God's purpose for your life. Now, I want to kind of give you the, the bottom line here right up front today. This is what we're going to try to tackle today. If you've ever felt like following Jesus was difficult, today is for you. If you've ever felt like it was a struggle and you actually might not be very good at following Jesus, today is for you. If you wouldn't consider yourself a follower of Jesus yet, this is perfect. You're here for a study today that is just right for you. This is going to give you an inside peek, kind of a sneak peek, as what it's like to be a Christian today. Sometimes we get this idea in our head of what it's like to be a person of faith and it's totally different than what reality is. So in Ephesians chapter 4, Paul kind of writes to the church at Ephesus and what Paul does is he remembers something that he saw that was incredible that happened while he was once in the city of Ephesus. He saw this event. He saw something happen that he could not unsee and this would shape him forever. Now, this is not found in Ephesians chapter 4, but in Acts 19. Acts chapter 19, verse 17. The story of what happened spread quickly all through Ephesus to Jews and Greeks alike. A solemn fear descended on the city, and the name of the Lord Jesus was greatly honored. Many who became believers confessed their sinful practices. A number of them who had been practicing sorcery brought their incantation books and burned them at a public bonfire. The value of the books was several million dollars. So the message about the Lord spread widely and had powerful and had a powerful effect. Now when you study the first century, you see sorcery. It was like a philosophical viewpoint of the, of the world at that time. They believed that they could manipulate the spiritual realm to their benefit. All people who were living in this way, teaching sorcery and who were practicing it and trying to get others to do it, these people started following Jesus in Ephesus. And not only did they start following Jesus, but they took it to an, an extreme action to ensure their loyalty to Jesus. This was an extreme act of devotion, an extreme act of faithfulness that would influence uh, so many. And it influences what Paul says here in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 17. With the Lord's authority, I say this. Live no longer as the Gentiles do, for they are hopelessly confused. Their minds are full of darkness. They wander far from the life of God. The life of God gives them because they have closed their minds and hardened their hearts against Him. They have no sense of shame. They live for lustful pleasure and eagerly practice every kind of impurity. Paul was writing to people who love Jesus. Paul was saying, people who love Jesus, you should act like people who love Jesus. You should not be living and acting like the culture around you. You've been taught different. You should live like a follower of Jesus. Now, if you don't believe in Jesus... You first and foremost need to consider Jesus. Jesus is the one that you should be focused on. 
Because you need to understand who Jesus is. You need to understand why Jesus loves you and just how far Jesus went to show, to show you how much he loves you by going to the cross and dying for you personally. And once you understand the scope of this love and you understand just how much he is desperate for you to have a relationship with him, for you to start loving Jesus, then all this other stuff in life will begin to fall in place and you'll begin to understand what it means to be a follower of Jesus. You see, sometimes we feel like, well, why should I obey this? Everything's, everything makes sense once you start with Jesus. When you start with the love of Jesus and you begin to understand that God is a good, good father, what he asks you and I to do he does this out of his immense, immeasurable love for us. God does everything for us. Everything he asks us to do is to protect us. One pastor put it like this. Sin breaks God's heart because sin breaks people. Sin has consequences. It has negative effects on the quality of your life, on your heart, your soul, your mind. Sin causes pain. And many of us today, we can attest to how sin has damaged us and hurt us. This is why Paul says, don't live like the culture around you. It leads to pain, confusion, even death. Paul is about to explain why it's so hard to follow Jesus. And then he begins to talk about what we can do about this. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 20. But that isn't what you learned about Christ. Since you have heard about Jesus and have learned the truth that comes from him, throw off your old sinful nature and your former way of life, which is corrupted by lust and deception. Instead, let the Spirit renew your thoughts and attitudes. Put on your new nature, created to be like God, truly righteous and holy. Paul says you should throw off your sinful nature. Throw off your former life. Put on this new nature. It's like Paul saying, follow Jesus. But this following Jesus isn't easy because following Jesus is not automatic. There are some things that you and I, we have to do. A lot of us have made mistakes along the way. A lot of us have hurt people in the process of living for ourselves and doing whatever we wanted to do in our own personal lives. So the first thing that we need to see here today is this. The lifestyle of the old self is a lifestyle of futility and not freedom. Whenever you actually have made these painful decisions in your life and people know about this, or you're just striving to be like a good boy or good girl and you kind of built this super thick sense of self-righteousness and pride like you were better than everyone else and everyone else saw that, you begin to realize how dangerous these two extremes are when we walk in self-righteousness or pride or we walk in destruction and sin. And everybody sees it because they see us on these two extremes, you know, and, and we're messed up individuals. Either way, you and I, we have sat in that old life. We have walked in that former way of life. And in some ways, we're grounded in that. That's what we know. And, you know, none of us were satisfied in that. None of us felt like it was enough to stay in that old life. There was something missing within us. We needed Jesus to fill that God-shaped vacuum within us. And and we knew that that old life, it wasn't the answer. There had to be more to this life than what we were doing and how we were living. And because of what Jesus did for us, because he went to the cross and he died for us, and, and God raised him. He was resurrected from the grave. He then gives us the life that he gives for us when he, he asks us to put our trust in him. When we accept this free gift of salvation that Jesus offers to us, and we have decided to follow Jesus, we accept the gift. He gives us a brand new life. And every day, we have a clean slate. You know, the slate is clean. Every day you wake up with hope and joy and peace. It's unbelievable when you move from the old life and you begin to start to live in this new life, you start to have a whole new view. And it's so incredible. You see, the second thing is the lifestyle of the new self is a lifestyle of reflecting God's character. This doesn't mean that the bad stuff doesn't happen to you. Bad stuff, bad things still happen to us even when we become followers of Jesus. It just means when the bad stuff happens, now there's a whole different way of how to handle it. There's a different way to work through it. There's a whole new perspective on life. 
and it's so much better in Christ. Some of you, like myself, can, can remember the day that we were baptized into Christ. And I remember how amazing it was. You know, you came up out of the water and people were cheering for you. They were excited for you. And the Bible even says all of heaven is celebrating because you've given your life to Jesus. And in that moment, you thought, there'll never be a day that I won't live for Jesus until you woke up the next day. You thought it would be easy. You thought it would be automatic. You thought it would be automatic because, you know, what happens is you know, our old life is like living on an island. And we kind of liked that island, but it was not self-fulfilling. And because Jesus came, Jesus built a bridge. And Jesus built a bridge between the old life, the old island, to the new island, a new life. And we choose to walk the bridge to this new life, this new island. And there it's self-fulfilling. It, it, it gives us everything that we need in this new life, this new island. But we spend much of our lives following Jesus, as followers of Jesus, walking the bridge. We want to walk back and forth. We want, to, we want to be in the new life and live in the new life and experience things, but there's some things we miss in the old life, and we tend to walk across the water back into the old life. And we spend a lot of time going back and forth and back and forth, old, new, old, new. And Paul seems to think in Ephesians chapter 4 that we're not powerless in this. Paul seems to believe there's something that you and I can do about this. He says there are some actions that we can take. We need to throw off the old nature and put on the new nature. Now remember, Paul is operating. He's writing this based on his memory of what he saw in the book of Acts when he went to Ephesus the first time. This experience he had when he saw all these men and women burn millions of dollars worth of books and they burnt these books to make sure that they would not go back to their old lives. Paul remembered these guys taking extreme action, burning all these books. And there's no mistake why Paul wrote this in Romans chapter 13, verse 14. But put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to gratify its desires. He says, give it no chance to walk back. Don't give yourself the opportunity to cross the bridge back into the old lifestyle. Don't be trying to go back and forth. Don't give it anything. Don't give anything to walk across that bridge back to what you once were. Now here's what he asks us to do. Burn the bridges. You say, well, what bridges? You know, what bridges do, do we need to burn down? Well, what is that thing right now that you need to get rid of in your life? What is that thing in your life that is there by choice? You don't have to have that in your life. You could burn that bridge to the ground. You could do whatever it takes to make sure that you never go back to your old ways. So whatever bridge it is for you, you have the choice to burn it down. I believe that Paul would just say you need to take some extreme action. You need to burn some bridges in your life. You need to do whatever it takes to give your, your, your flesh no option. To give your sinful nature no option you know, of going back to your old way of life. Now, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 23. He says, instead, let the Spirit renew your thoughts and attitudes. Put on your new nature, created to be like God, truly righteous and holy. The third thing that Paul says here, living, you know, living for Jesus, you know, is living like the new self. How do we live like the new self? There are some bridges in your life that you cannot burn. Now, there are some bridges in your life that you've been trying to burn for a long time and you haven't. You can do all kinds of things to ensure that you don't cross the bridge to go back to your old nature. You know, that old sinful nature is always tugging at us. But there's some bridges like the bridge of pride, you know, and eternally we struggle with this pride and we tend to cross the bridge back into that old self of pride. And you cannot burn that bridge. Only God can break your pride. There's, there is this bridge called pride that only God can burn to the ground. Some of us have an envious or lustful heart. We're never content with what we have. We can do all this financial play in the world, but it just doesn't change our heart because our heart is not content. 
You can't change a heart that is constant looking at what other people have and, and you lust for. And, and you're always saying, I wish I had what they have. This is something that only God can do. God can burn that bridge to the ground. You cannot change the heart of anger. No, no amount of wise decisions will change the fact that you're, you are very sharp and, and you snap on your kids. Or you're sharp and you snap on your spouse. Or you snap on your friends when you're tired. This is an attitude. This is a heart issue that only God can change. And God wants to burn that bridge to the ground. I'm just telling you, there are some things that you cannot do that only God can do. And what you can't do, He can. I think there would be no prayer that God would rather hear from His people today than this prayer. Jesus, I love you. And I'm doing everything I can to follow you. I, I've done some things that I shouldn't have done. I've done everything I can to burn every bridge that will lead me back to my old self. I'm burning them all down. I'm working hard. I'm doing everything that I possibly can. Now, I think some of you, today, you've been trying to burn down that same bridge over and over and over again. And God wants to say something to you today. Stop trying to do this yourself and let me do it. You simply come to me and ask me to change your heart. You come to me and ask me to fix what you cannot fix on your own on the inside. And Jesus would say it like this, Matthew chapter 7, verse 7. Keep on asking, and you'll receive what you ask for. Keep on seeking, and you will find. Keep on knocking, and the door will be open to you. For everyone who asks, receives. Everyone who seeks, finds. And everyone who knocks, the door will be open. We just need to get more serious about asking our Heavenly Father to do what only He can do. And to do what the prophet Isaiah says in the Old Testament. Isaiah 62 verse 7. Give the Lord no rest until He completes His work. Pray and give Him no rest until He completes the work within you. And Jesus promises that he will. He has promised that he will bring it to completion. He who began a good work in me, in you, he will complete it. He will finish it. He has promised he will. You just got to ask God to burn the bridges that you cannot burn on your own. The Message Connect questions have been provided for you today in a discussion guide. The Message Connect is focused on helping you to take the next steps. The next steps are designed to help you dive deeper into God's Word. We simply want to challenge you and encourage you to take these next steps. At Ringo, we believe that growing people change. And to grow, we need to take these next steps. And the discussion guide helps you to start talking through these next steps. Start thinking through this. Start sharing. Start praying. Start doing. Why not take these steps today? Go deeper in your relationship with the Lord. Ask Him to do what maybe you cannot do on your own. You burn the bridges that you can, and you allow God to burn the bridges to the ground that you can. Let's get started today. God bless you.